Welcome to our video of how to install drywall on a ceiling to make it look like this using this and you can do it all by yourself. So your standard sheet of drywall is four feet wide. So you want to measure off four feet, which is here, and then do an eyeball. So I'm going to go right through the middle of my smoke detector. So unfortunately for the first sheet, I'm going to have to take that off. I'm also covering up my heat run here. Now this one is strapped down, it won't move out of the way. So my drywall is going to have to bend over it and cut it out right away. So what I want to do is get a measurement. I want to measure to the middle of this. So I'm 38 inches off. So I make a mark, 38 inches. And then I measure from here, 39. Whatever way you want to mark it is fine. And then after we get the drywall screwed up a little bit, we'll get the cutting tool and zip that out. Okay, so I've got my forefoot marked. Now this is just a little trick that I've got in here. If you set a construction screw and not into your hand, just past your forefoot mark and leave it hanging three quarters of an inch right there. Now when I come in with my drywall, I can come up, I can hold the drywall with one hand, the other hand I can put on this brace. And you can see that that's going to carry lots of weight. That frees up my hand. I can grab my drill, load some screws, put a few in, nice and simple. If you are working alone and you have to drywall your ceiling, this is a great trick. Strap one of those suckers up there with some construction screws. And then we have this block up here in the middle of the ceiling, okay? Again, construction screw all the way through, attach it just past your four foot mark. This enables you to actually lift the sheet up, put it in, walk up the ladder with it, hold it with one hand, and spin the block over on top. All right, and now I'm gonna do a demonstration. Keep it nice and tight. So what I do is I like to set up in front of my ladder, and then I just take this sheet, lift it up, hoist it up over your head. Whew. Once you're there, you can let that lumber there do all the carrying. Now the reason you want to leave this nice and loose is so that anything that's in the way, you have a little room. Now we're good to go. I can pull out the drill and screw this bad boy in. When you're taking off your smoke detector, we have to take off two things. One is the body of this, and it has a little pinch on it. You take this little plate, and you just wiggle this off. Oh, Lord, that's how they've done it. This one requires you to pry and pull. Okay. And then disengage this mounting plate. Push everything up inside the box. Lucky for us, it's right on the edge, so we'll be able to see it when we install the drywall. If it's buried inside the ceiling, again, make your measurements, mark it on the wall. Always cut, always cut as you go. Don't rely on your measurements to save you. Sooner or later, someone's gonna forget to cut a hole and you'll do all your taping and the priming and you'll be like, oh yeah, where's that box? So always cut as you go. So now we're gonna install this as a two-man application. Once again, very similar. Um, when you're installing a piece of drywall on the same size as the room, it's difficult to just lift it up over your head like I did in the demonstration. So really what you want to do is you want to lay one end flat and lift the other end up. Go ahead. There's always one guy that's high and one guy that's low. Because the distance in the room from there to there, now the room is almost 11 feet long. When it's in square, it's only 10 feet long. As soon as you lift that corner, it's 11 feet long. Now what you do is you pay attention to your end and you keep it as tight to that corner as you can. All okay. right, and square, and we slide it in together. All right, now, we might even have room here to get this above our drywall, I don't know. Probably not. There's my third pair of hands. <laughs> The little block comes in handy even if you got two guys working. So we have a smoke detector and we've got a, a heat run. And we don't want to put any screws anywhere near that stuff. Because it'll end up breaking right through, okay? And that would be just a waste of time. So, 
I got a heat run over here. So I'm gonna, first screw's gonna go on the strapping out of the way a little bit. There we go. I don't wanna get anywhere near my heat run. All right, and then on each side, usually about three or four on each side of the sheet. That's enough to hold it in place. We get the cutting tool right away. All right, Captain, cutting tool. My hole is 38. And then 39. It's a good little technique for drawing. Now we bring the road is it. Want to set the guard so that we're going to cut it properly. Pull towards the middle. That's it. There you go. Okay, so our box here is mounted up really too high for what we're doing here for finishing the ceiling. And they've used flooring screws as well. That's cool. Let's pull these wires out of here. Out of the way. Holy cow. Lots of wires. All right. We just want to drop our box a little bit so that our mounting screws will actually work. We can put these on first. The other mounting screw. Thanks, buddy. push back in first. That'll be a nightmare trying to do that afterwards. And then when you're putting these back in, check the pin position. There's a couple of holes and then a big space and then another hole. Make sure you line them up properly. If you put it in backwards the first time, you don't get the try again. And we're gonna leave that hanging until our other sheet goes in. Just so it's not in the way, but we should be fine. Depending on how comfortable you are when you're drywall and ceiling, with uh, drawing a straight line. It can be a good habit. Mark off where the wood is first, if you find it necessary. I generally don't do that, but I know some guys live by that rule. Now, also a good habit, I always go five screws. If you're doing a renovation at your own home, and you go with four screws, you probably won't have a problem. But if you get sloppy and lazy about these things, one of these days, maybe you'll be working on a job site and it'll be commercial drywall and there's fire rating involved. And if this inspector only sees four screws in a sheet of drywall, he'll fail your installation. Because believe it or not, there's a building code for just about everything. So this one here is 12 inches to the center. The trick here is first of all, you just need to get it up, all right? First, before you do anything, just get it up into place. Um, if it's a two-man assembly, it's the same thing. The other guy's in charge of holding the weight and not letting it bounce around. Because while it's jiggling, it'll pop off the screws. If you're by yourself, you're gonna need about six or eight of those little wooden blocks that I showed you. Uh, that can be quite precarious. Now, we also have an electrical box in the middle of the room. So again, we wanna screw it around the outside perimeter. I like to use my head in this kind of situation, which is why I'm going a little bald on the top. Now, the goal here is make sure that the drywall is tight together. You don't want a gap here. It just causes a whole lot of extra mud and a lot of extra drying. You know where your straps are because that's where your screws are left off. So you can get the first three screws in here without even moving around. 
And then all I gotta do, shift my weight and hold that. Don't be jiggling around there. You're not allowed to move. You just gotta feel the burn. Once I get a few screws on my side, like a good neighbor, I'll go over and put a couple in his too. Sooner or later, the lactic acid will start to burn. <laughs> That's So in this situation, the box for the electrical is really recessed in the ceiling. It's on the original joist, not the strapping. Uh, not a concern. The electrician is gonna come back and put the fixture up. And what he can do is he can buy a half inch extender. It screws to that box and brings it down to a height where it closes off the gap. It's good for fire separation, but it's also good for mounting things. Um, I'd like to use the box extender instead of just using really long screws. Just call me old fashioned. I like to have these gaps closed up just in case. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, but most importantly, comment on the videos by all means or a suggestion of video you'd like to see, let us know. We'd love to be in touch.